Open range, fence-free, wild boar shooting is not like you see in the movies, which can come as a surprise to first-timers. It's unpredictable, frustrating, challenging and most definitely adrenaline pumping. <laughs> Freaking Nora. Oh man. When the opportunity arises, you need to have done everything you can to make that moment count. Which is why, on this trip to Portugal with Sergio Couto, Paul is going to drop in some of his top tips to maximise your chances. Concentrate on shooting one pig. Don't care about anything else. Before we get into the hunting, we pick up a nugget of information about the packs of hunting dogs that make these events work. They're blood donors. How many hunters are here today? Uh, 55 hunters, and we are using 15 packs of dogs, which is about 400 dogs. <laughs> so it's, it'll, be, it'll be some quantity of barkin, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, you were talking yesterday about the care that these, these dogs have. I mean, they have a hard working life and they're dealing with some quite treacherous situations. Yeah, yeah. But it was astonishing what you were saying yesterday about the care that goes into these and actually how you sort of subsidize some of that care. Yeah, yeah, that was a, a actually a fantastic idea from, from some of the hunters over here. So basically what they do is some of that pack hounds, hunters, they align to uh, giving blood blood from the, the best dogs and that blood is sold to the blood bank for veterinary. So which in, in exchange the veterinary comes over and check their dogs, the vaccinations, their, you know, do all the care in exchange for that blood, which then that blood people don't realize is going to veterinary to treat their people's chihuahuas or pinchers or they don't know where that that blood coming from and they come from hunting dogs that you know they're athletes these guys are athletes this one here i know he's got 32 dogs in and uh yeah military spec vehicle all kitted out got the got the chasers the voice and the powerhouses in this, the two separate cabins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they got to be on their own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're. I think, do you know what? I think, I think these guys love their pack. But they love having their two big bodyguards with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, the two heavies, you know. <laughs> Look at this lot. You know, if they could talk, hey, yeah, yeah. what stories could you get from them? Let's get started. We have three days of hunting before David heads home to prepare for the British shooting show, leaving Paul in charge of the shot cam for day four. Paul is shooting the Sacco 90 Peak in 300 Win Mag, one of the lightest hunting rifles on the market in one of the bigger calibers, with an Aimpoint Acro C2 on top. Each day will offer one or two drives and every stand is totally different. Unfortunately, on this drive, the thickness of cover means we can't get off a shot on a pig, so Paul gives us our first tip. Red dot sights. Everybody has their own preference. This is the Acro from main point. It's really important getting the brightness of the red dot right for you. Personally, like we were in Africa, we had it really bright. Same with this bright sunny day. We could have a ball come really close, not charging us, but very close. We could help them charge us. Again, you want it bright so your eye picks up straight away. You haven't got to search for it up, straight in, gun, bang, rather than like trying to look for a faint, faint dot. So again, you can get on the stand, nice and illuminate, down, up, down, just the way you're comfortable. Range finder, know your distances and get your markers. So you've got that tree, that stone, so you know your distances and uh, yeah, success rate will be better. While we didn't have a clean chance today, others have. It's a slick operation. There's an on-site vet who checks the animals and a company from Spain has hopped across the border to pick up and process the game. They don't mess about. It's teamwork, you know, these guys are doing it all the time. They obviously get to Monteria late at night and, you know, it's time's ticket. They want to get, get done, get the animals in the chiller and um, get home. So, yeah, fast, efficient, clean. And the session, obviously the, the young lady here is obviously checking the nymph nose and the glands. Um, that's her job, we've got the, the two guys over there which are doing basically brisket, H-bone, legs, relic out, head off first, job done. In Portugal there is some areas called the, the, the red zones, so TB prevention areas, so there's places that in the past had problems so they created as a red zone, so we have by law, we have to have a vet on site, like we have now, um, but there's places further south we don't have to have a vet. 
Most of the times we have, but we don't have to. But in this area where we hunt in Castel Branco, we have to have a vet on site. So they have to check every single animal that is harvested, uh, and then she deems if he's fitable for the table or not. Day two, and it's different terrain. We're just above a river and overlooking two valleys. We make sure our neighbour can see us as there's a good chance animals could pass between the two stands. And they do. A half safe, chance on a boar safe, means Paul can safe. offer up another wild boar nugget. Not safe. Next top tip is discipline. That was an easy boar walking across the track. I'm disappointed, but it wasn't safe enough. 300 wind mag at that sort of angle. You got yourself a ricochet and a, and a, and a whole pile of poo on your hands. So, yeah. <laughs> And that's after two hours of waiting here. So the, the ups and downs of the motion. I was, well, I was hoping that he was going to go to the other end of the track and I could still see him going into the other side, but I knew it was too thick, so yeah. So we let him run. <laughs> Discipline. Once again, there's been plenty of shooting across the vast hunting area. However, a year's worth of rainfall falling in a couple of days has had an impact on the wildlife. Now there's food everywhere. Talking of food, we have a delicious, fresh, late lunch and the dogs get some rest. We have a big day tomorrow. Today's pest control job is a bit different. We're on a vineyard. The boar haven't been touched here for a couple of years and they need thinning out. We're told to move towards an area of scrub. We can hear the pigs inside it. Paul just has to be ready if they come our way. Paul gets off two shots. Incredible, considering he had a jam. More on that in a moment. He's not 100% sure if he has made contact. Absolute mayhem. Pigs go in every direction. First shot felt good in the first pit. Now the bloody jam. Thank you. I'll take that one. I'll take that one any day of the week. Oh. I absolutely was like, that is going to get it slowed. And I just did exactly the same thing. Swung through it so smoothly. Ed Solomon. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking Nora. Oh, man. And that was awesome. Right in the front. What a shot. We know there are two pigs down for sure, but there's doubt over the first two. Definite two, possibly a third. From standstill to 100 mile an hour. That's been on the A game from nothing, so yeah. <laughs> Including yourself. So yeah, it's good, it's really good, really, really exciting. The Magnum rounds are something we've touched on with pHs in Africa, where the throw of the bolt is that little bit longer. Because they're such long bullets, you've got to make sure you pull your bolt right back and slam it for it. But in the haste and the rush and everything else, you used to doing <laughs> a little short movement. Um, yeah, I had a jam up. Um, well, not a jam up, basically didn't pull the bolt back far enough because I was rushing, trying to get it, because there were pigs everywhere. And uh, I caught the top of the bullet instead of catching the back. So, but, but you know what? I still got a second shot off. Whacked the mag back in, straight in. I shot the second, so, you know. Good all, recovery. Good recovery, it wasn't all bad. Didn't empty the mag, but um, yeah. It's good. What surprises Paul about his Sacco 90 peak is the lack of recoil. Carbon stock, 
stainless steel barrel, fluted, semi-fluted barrel. Great for this, because it's nice and, nice and light. And um, what I do like about it, it soaks up the recoil. 300 wind mag's got, it's known to be pretty punchy. And uh, it's nice, gentle, to be fair. It's got no weight on it, got no scope, got no moderator to, to give it a bit of, a bit of weight so it stops the muzzle flip, but no, it's perfect. Stack. Carry this all day in the mountains or uh, stand with it as a, as a driven all day. You don't even know you got it, so good choice. When the drive's over, we head across and there are four dead boar in front oh, of us. Beautiful textbook. Textbook. Maybe the first shot missed. Not the first shot was in the throat. So they're on the right line. This would be, or well, depending on what that one looks like. This is the first group, and yeah, smack on the heart. And then I just see another one there as well. <laughs> a little bit surpri surprised because <laughs> we had a bit of problem with the with the uh, reloading. My fault, not a rifle fault. My fault. I just didn't pull it far enough back. But we dropped the mag out and we chambered another round pretty quick and um, got the second shot into the second wild boar. Oh, I can't believe it. Over there. I thought we had two. Now we got three. And now I got four. four. So yeah, four. four for four. Yes. This, this, this is the one. Shot it lower, and it's going. It's see, it's a different angle. Going back at that angle there, because he's going away from me more. Yeah. Yep. Lower. See. Yep. So the left and the right, <laughs> going good at the moment. And then this one they're here. I can see some ears. Oh, it's bigger. This was the charger. Big, 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 big. So how far away? It's over 100, isn't it? Yeah, it's 120. Switch back to this fence post. Yeah, 120. Wow, four. I'm really chuffed we got four. Four with five shots. I doubled up on the one. And, um, it, but there was no textbook bore. It, everything was like quarter and away. The, the, the one at the top was a nice bore, come across beautiful. But everything else was like, you know, and this, one, that, this one stayed to the end. That come out like from this track here, flat out, fast, fast as you could. So, yeah, nice to, see a, nice to see one roll like that. Well, I'm not sure if I saw it roll. Uh, I had a black screen at the time. Fingers but I crossed. I would say that, um, you know, if people say anything about this being a female, we've been told to shoot everything. This is a pest control job here, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah, and hit it hard, hit it once. Yeah, do it every um, time it needs doing. You were saying you could actually feel your ears pumping, as in your uh, heart yeah, was Yeah, I mean, it's like a bit like a fox drive. When a fox, you know, if a cock doesn't cocks up, you know you're there, you know he's there. And he, where's he going to come? Where's he? It was like that, but we knew they were in there because the brambles were absolutely erupting. The dogs were fighting and squealing, and one dog got smacked, yeah. and then, oh, my God. Some come out of the top, a couple come out of the bottom. And they were like literally just 40 yards, 30 yards from us. And then, yeah, and then the old, I thought, oh, steady on. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. Yeah, which is, which, which is what it's about, you know? If you don't have the, the excitement and the, the, the excitement and the love for it, it's like, you know, it's what, what we're doing it for. So yeah, but good, good result. Four animals, five shots. And the copper done the job, which is, which is good. Good to see actually, 300 wind mag, Copper bullets, you know, everything within 80 yards of the bramble bush, and they were charged up animals coming out 100 mile an hour. So, pretty pleased that for copper. So, yeah, all good. No wounded. On the way back to base, we spot a Kyla. It looks vaguely familiar. Checking the footage, we spot it. It was part of that original explosion. After two days of build-up, we feel we deserve our pigs, but these trips are so much more than pulling the trigger. David, this is your first driven shoot, is that right? Yeah, absolutely, yes. And yes, come on indeed. then, how have you found it? Very different, extremely exciting. I've, I've not shot too much just yet. I got one hind yesterday. Uh, I'm still waiting for that magical boar moment. I know lots of the guys have had amazing experiences today, but I'm waiting for my big chance tomorrow. You know, I've already told Sergio, put me down for next year uh, straight away because it's just, it's, just a, it's just everything with it. The excitement, the, uh, the camaraderie with everybody. You know, the, the, everybody's really... Uh, 
uh, helpful, uh, the, the food, the, the climate, everything. Together with my friend Tiago, Monterias Contradição, and the, the team that he gets together, you know, we have one, we can guarantee one thing, is people are going to have a good time. We cannot guarantee you, you're going to shoot something, but that is, is beyond us, but we can guarantee that a good time, we have control over that, the accommodation, the food, the reception, we can control that. We cannot control how good a shot you are, how many opportunities you're going to have, but the rest, the rest we, we can do well. And best, you know, every year, we, the more we do, the better we get at it. We cannot just be too comfortable. And we cannot, we said that many times, we can never think that we made it, because the day we think that, just downhill from there, you know, <laughs> so. For more information about the Sacco 90 range, including the carbon stocked peak, go to sacco.fi. For more information about the Aimpoint Acro C2, go to aimpoint.com. And of course, if you would like to book a hunt with our good friends Sergio and Tiago, head over to circoutwildharvest.com. We'll be well looked after.